I started filming this video and I started talking about the effects of the electromagnetic fields along ley lines on the human consciousness and uh, body and my video stopped recording. <laughs> so I'll start again. If you are annoyed by discussions that might be a little bit woo, uh, you can just not watch this video. If you tune in and think, this is odd, human animals talking about this, it makes me angry because she's spoken up about psychic mediums. Um, again, just tune out. I've talked about this many times in the past, but not often recently. And I'm going to talk about it again. <laughs> Why have I talked about the rainbow serpent ley line in the past? Well, this electromagnetic line wrapping around... Um, the earth, it's incredibly powerful. We, we communicate through vibration and along these lines, there's not only a natural earthly phenomenon such as, say, Uluru, the, the big rock, the big flat top rock in the middle of um, Australia. Some people know it as Ayers Rock. Uh, doesn't only dissect through natural wonders of the world, uh, but it's where people have built cities such as Machu Picchu, the Giza Pyramid, the um, Stonehenge uh, monoliths in England. And we're talking... On perfect alignment okay with this electromagnetic line there's the rainbow serpent ley line there's a Western civilization uh, Arcadian ley line and they dissect these two main these two ley lines they dissect at Pilot Mountain 170 miles as you drive shorter as the crow flies from Kingsport, where Summer Moon Utah Wells has disappeared off the face of this little planet. So you've got Pilot Mountain, where the Rainbow Serpent Ley Line and the Arcadian Ley Line dissect. So it creates what someone has dubbed i don't think it was alfred watts watkins uh that dubbed the pilot mountain um pilot wheel but he's acknowledged as sort of a the westerner the the modern person to recognize hey wow look at this these electromagnetic lines where they run what's on them um I've been to Uluru, did I just say this? Because my video stopped recording, my camera stopped recording the video, when I started talking about moods and consciousness and memory all affected by these ley lines. I can't remember what I've quite said, but I have been to Uluru and uh, it's palpable. The vibration, I... I would love to feel that all the time but I think you can tap into things if you're open-minded about it sometimes see the thing is you don't realize what's influencing you either you know is it the moon is it an electromagnetic field is it interaction with others energies you you can you don't have to exchange energy with another human being okay just trust in that because I think a lot of people feel like um they're very vulnerable if they encounter evil um some people f consider demon um demons attached to people some people consider that to be real and they worry about that you've got to know every energy exchange when it's you, you've got you've got to be in control okay you can be in control but this electromagnetic 
ley line. Let's talk about this. Pilot Mountain is very near where Summer Moon Utah Wells went missing. So as the crow flies, probably 100 miles, maybe 170 mile drive. So you've got Pilot Mountain where Arcadian and Rainbow Serpent intersect male, female ley lines. And in Australian dream time, me as a, a white westerner, I'll never know this um, truly or deeply, but the Rainbow Serpent, it's not like in the Garden of Eden, Eden well, say a bringer of knowledge when the Eden already existed. Um, in the Aboriginal culture, um, it could be said that the Rainbow Serpent came out from Uluru and went around the world creating the Eden and creating the different habitats. It actually was fecund, wasn't it? It's fertile, so it's a female dragon line. Um, and then you've got the Arcadian ley line, so they dissect right on Pilot Mountain. Why does this interest me? Uh, well, you know, then you've got a long... So then you've got these other intersections. You've got, I don't know who dubbed it, as I said, this pilot wheel. It's points around Pilot Mountain on the ley lines and on the latitude lines uh, where, interestingly, just like you might have Stonehenge, a geyser pyramid, etc., there are natural... Um, creations such as Uluru but you know so you've and, and then there's man-made so up up along the serpent ley line I think it's yeah nearly 600 miles to Delphi and Diana keep going 2,000 miles so another 1,500 miles Rexburg Idaho that's along the serpent ley line. And there's other interesting pla places that it dissects. And remember the curvature of the earth and everything like that. Along the latitude line, the slave latitude line, dissecting perfectly through Pilot Mountain and going out um, 200, 2,500 miles uh, to, to Bakersfield, Cal City Bakersfield. You've got... You'd go, following that Arcadian line, you're going up through uh, Washington, D.C. and straight up to New York City. Might actually go through uh, Boston. And out to the east, you're going straight through um, it's the Dismal Swamp and then down... South Carolina out through um, is it Cape Fear River area and then down is the Paris Island military base straight through um, and all dotted around so interestingly enough on each spot you've got Moundsville you've got Serpent Mound Standing Stone Park Stone Mountain so you've got sort of Mount uh, the states change I believe when you come down to Stone Mountain, that's Georgia. So what's that up there? can't remember. Georgia. Then you've got the Paris Island military base, Cape Fear River. Then you've got um, Great Dismal Swamp. And I feel like kind of there's, I feel like there's a seasonal thing going on. You've got Summer Moon, Utah, Wells in the middle, disappearing on Summer Solstice. You've got Alaya, Lunsford, uh, Lunsford, Lunsford, yeah, going missing from Weston, just the same distance from Moundsville, really, as Summer Wells went missing from Pilot Mountain um, on the 23rd of September 2011. Another blood ritual 
sacrifice time over up at Washington DC for example uh, from Kirby you've got Victor Shoemaker going missing on Corpus Christi in June um, so different times of year so winter coming down into spring I don't know it's, it's who knows what's going on but energy has to play a role in affecting people so it can have effect on what happens doesn't mean they have to actively uh, say be satans, satanists carrying out rituals but what if there's some sort of mechanism whereby the you know, some sort of forces whereby the, the, the mechanisms or the processes of these rituals essentially being the same thing happen anyway, right? So, you know, um, you could have a discussion that, yes, summer was taken, was held, and then was sacrificed for summer solstice, solstice and this is intentional by people, uh, you know, or... It's carried out because now it's so, it's part of the human collective consciousness and these things just play out, you know. I'm not saying, I'm thinking, well, these are all uh, satanic um, disappearances and deaths. They certainly happen at times. Uh, for example, we know with... Rexburg, what time of year it was. Um, and they're happening in places and in a certain way, which makes it very, very spooky, doesn't it? I don't know. If you invest in those sort of things. Okay. So... The equinoxes, yeah, very important, um, excuse me, and always have been um, for ancient civilizations, uh, less so today, I guess most people, they just don't really mean anything, maybe putting the clocks back or forward, but there is this, you know, this energy that's carrying through everyone and everything. And it seems to be like sort of piling up, you know, and all just getting in a jumble because there's so there's so much, and now it's just all like now everything just seems to be um, it's like it's running out of data because you know and just reusing things over and over again. How many names, whether it's a place name, a person's name? etc how many times are they repeating in cases that have these similar effects and similar facts um, and similar mystery about them it, it's happening so regularly yeah so that you know that's kind of a little bit of that i mean down the arcadian ley line of course on on the mail line uh, Cash Gurnan directly on that line that the way that that happened and it, it that could have been some sort of blood ritual as such couldn't it like this male child sacrifice if 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 it was done intentionally it would look something like that and things don't have to be intentional people don't need to know why they become these things and then why they carry out these acts they don't they may not understand it they just they just feel it they just embody all the things that make it possible for them to do these things so who knows yeah, so we've had some interesting, we've had a couple of new interviews, um, fodder, I guess. Don't you find it curious that the cold case detective, the person who helped establish the 
cold case foundation is never actively working to a big degree as in he's not bringing cold cases to the fore and putting all that energy out to the public getting the interest the help the information the evidence built up again and rechecking and rechecking trying to solve cold cases through his youtube channel it's clout chasing do you find that curious you know he's the cold case detective mcdo you know why is he running around after summer wells after suzanne morphew isn't it interesting so the new interviews have left everything obviously as clear as mud i mean don obviously always dropping in something interesting um but he's not doing anything to look for his daughter and nor is his um his wife candace bligh neither of them are actively looking for their daughter they know she's gone they know what's happened to her and the question is who else does you know i feel like uh, candy certainly does and you just um yeah have to wait and see what the truth of everything is and who's lying and why and Hopefully there'll be some res resolution. Um, you know, it's frustrating seeing people that will go clout chasing, but they don't know how many sons someone has. They don't recognize when they should be answering, uh, getting answers on something very important. And they don't, you know, I'm watching because I, I enjoyed the driving around of the landscape. I've always loved channels such as Jules Another Day in the Car because you are right there where these things happen, taking um, the same drives, following the same routes, etc. And it just really helps you connect. And so, <laughs> you know, Chris is driving and he's he's pondering on all the churches, you know, and it's just so frustrating that he can't, offer at the time his expertise about Don and his mental makeup and him going into the SDA in Kingsport because Don has been educated. He's been educated about the new, um, he's been educated about the truth of the Sabbath day being Saturday. So now he's taking his family 20 plus miles into the Seventh Day Adventist Church, which doesn't have a lot of people. It's not jam packed. It's not like, oh gosh, you know. Um, but, you know, and he's pondering this about all these little churches and why. And maybe it's because Walmart's there or, you know, they can go shopping. Uh, would Don allow Candace to do any, uh, you know, work on the Sabbath? <laughs> Don's super controlling. I think Candace is talking about being smothered, not by grief, although no doubt she is feeling a little bit of that, and probably a lot of fear of being caught, uh, but just smothered by Don. And Don's saying, you know, as your mother taught you when she's talking about her sister Rose Bly in the interview, you hear him mutter, you know, um, she repeats phrases that he uses and they say the same things and he um oh he's a, he's a, he's very controlling i mean from h's testimony whether we can believe it or not and what would he know but you know it's it's normal for don to call candace every 2 hours when he's at work what does that remind you of, ladies? And maybe gents, you know, there is this dynamic there. We know all about it. And it's very apparent. But yeah, it was a little bit frustrating, you know, seeing Chris thinking there's two sons, not asking about the other one who was left behind. 
Um, and not that H would know, okay, and when did Don return to drop them off so that all three boys were there at the end of the day, apparently when Summer has, um, as Don alleges, has been abducted from the home on Ben Hill Road. You know, and then the stories are coming out that, you know, oh, the creeper's there, there's the creeper hanging around. Uh, was this call set up so that H could then repeat that there's a creeper hanging around? Or what is the deal with that? Was that Don gaslighting Candace? She wasn't concerned. She didn't race straight home. She still continued on with her day. Oh, I just think there are a couple of lying freaks. Yeah, so just wanted to talk about the electromagnetic ley lines, how they intersect at Pilot Mountain, right there at Kingsford, where Summer Moon Utah Wells went missing at Summer Solstice. And, you know, just think about how energy, how vibration affects you. It does affect your thoughts, your mood, your perception. It affects your decisions. It affects your personality. It can affect small and very important things. And, you know, there's a reason why, you know, with the moon, Luna, um, there's a reason why lunatic is the term used you know it it was related to the full moon and people just going crazy on the full moon you know <laughs> um the everything is is simply energy we are just energy this is all we are and it's everything we are so it's it's fascinating from that point of view just to ponder when these things happen and they seem to happen i mean so many things have made it possible you know the histories of the um antagonists and the victims and the you know there's so much obviously that has to go into coming together at this place and time and space right uh but it's fascinating and it's is it it's like something is playing out and if someone is going to be affected in a certain way um in these incredible intense ways uh these spots on the planet you know are very likely as locations because of the energy it's a real thing so you know if you've ever been to any of these places, you know, have you been to Machu Picchu and have you felt that vibration? Have you been to Australia, to Uluru, Ayers Rock, and have you have you felt that? It's it's out of the ground, it's in the air, it's um it's an impossible sensation to describe. Unless you've felt it. So have you felt it? Have you visited the United Kingdom? And have you been out to look at Stonehenge? You know? What kind of vibes are you getting in different places? Just like you walk into a neighborhood or a home or a field or a forest or a part of the coast or something. Um... And you can sense you you feel wrong you feel you the tension or the cold or the closing in um, or joy lightness of being and expansion you know you feel these things right so why can't they be something to do with energy? and where you are in relation to that energy and then maybe how 
receptive you are as to how it affects you or how aware you are of why you're doing things or yeah anyway I'm garbling on as per usual uh, I'm running late now so I'll see you later <laughs> thanks for listening and again don't complain about the woo just scroll over the woo and if it offends you so much I thank you for being here up until now I really do because um yeah I've had amazing support but if you really don't like it you're welcome to unsubscribe I'm not offended upset distressed disturbed let down annoyed about that at all okay <laughs> um I'm asking people to unsubscribe more times than I ask to subscribe because I've never meant I I don't do that but I do say you're welcome to go um I just want everyone here that wants to be and that is comfortable and uh because I am a very uncomfortable person <laughs> to be around sometimes uh because of the things that I talk about and why I talk about them speak to you later